Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the entry level Camus C5 wheelbase and CP5 pedals. And these are not new products, they've been out for about a year. And just a few days after Camus agreed to send me these for review, they actually launched the C12, which takes the same basic concept and adds features and functionality and strength. Nonetheless, I think the C5 is still a very interesting product because the entry level segment is a very important one for newcomers, whether they be casual racers or will become diehard fans one day and just don't know it yet. And over the last three years, I've been experiencing more and more high end equipment and I felt like I was kind of losing touch with the entry level segment. So having the C5 in for review today is a really great opportunity for me to revisit the current state of the entry level segment. Now Camus sent me this equipment to review and it is mine to keep, which is a little different to what's been on the channel so far where I've actually returned the equipment. I do have complete freedom in what I say and how I say it, but Camus do have a set quota of content they want to see released on YouTube and that is formalized in a signed contract. And that's a first for me on this channel because every single other review I've done has been just a handshake deal. I don't think a contract is a bad thing. It's just a way for two people to be sure that they have an understanding and I wouldn't have signed anything that I didn't think was fair. That being said, I am aware of the inherent bias that that introduces, but I'll still do my best to assess this product on its own merits and share that with you so your purchasing decisions can be better informed. The C5 is a relatively inexpensive entry-level direct drive steering wheel, which is priced not a lot higher than the Logitech G29 and its variants. That is the bar for which I'll be comparing the C5 against, but I also have a lot of experience with more costly direct drive options, up to 32 newton meters of torque, and I'll be comparing against those two. As the C5 is basically non-upgradable, in my opinion, it has two main goals. One, to be good enough for casual users to use forever and recommend to people. And two, to be good enough that when hardcore racers are ready to move on from the C5, that they had such a good experience with it that they want to buy something higher end from the same company. When the C5 first launched a year ago, I thought it was a completely wild idea. Moving the motor into the wheel meant a completely different form factor than what we're used to, which is a big heavy motor base with a more conventional steering wheel that bolts onto the top of it. With the C5, everything is in the wheel itself and the only thing where you would expect the conventional motor to be is the mounting hardware. I was actually surprised at how familiar this wheelbase felt once I unboxed it and installed it. I think the shock factor had worn off and to me, it just is what it is and it's a very clean and compact design that will be appreciated by those who like to get their monitors nice and low behind their steering wheel. When I first saw the round hub in photos, I felt it was a bit uninspired. There's basically no design effort in drawing a circle. But again, I was surprised when I unboxed it that it actually looks and feels pretty good, especially with the carbon plate and the chunky rim. Admittedly, the buttons are super plasticky and they are probably the one thing that lets down the look and feel of the C5. But overall, I do think that the look and feel is pretty good and we have to remember that we are comparing against others in its price range like the Logitech G29, which is a lot more plasticky. At this price point, the build quality and the feel in the hands, I think, is a win. The ergonomics of the C5 are okay. The 28cm width I really like and the chunky feel of the rim is very nice. I don't love the buttons, I'll talk about them a little bit later, but the paddle shifters you probably know about already, they're insanely small and they're also positioned oddly towards the center of the wheel. So I have to reach my fingers inwards. And knowing me, I just had to 3D print some paddle extensions which move the paddles back by about an inch which really improves the ergonomics of the shift feel. And in terms of the actual shift action, it's not as crisp as a magnetic shifter, but it's definitely more defined than something like a Logitech G29. But I found the shift feel to be positive and consistent enough that I could race with it without any problems. The pedals I actually find really interesting because I've become used to more solidly built pedals like the Simagic P1000s and the VNM lights, which I have in the studio. And it's easy to look at the cheap construction of the CP5s and just write them off. After all, everything is just flat plate steel and it doesn't look racy at all. But there's an elegance to the design that I do appreciate. It comes in a tiny box and it's essentially like a flat pack set of pedals and it's really straightforward to assemble. There's no wires to connect. There's just these little magnets that wave around in the control box. So I thought that was a really clever design. So assembly is really easy. You just bolt it together and it works. Both pedals feel the same with resistance provided by a torsion spring. And though they don't provide a great driving experience, I do appreciate the elegance and the clever design that allows them to be compact and to sell at such a low price. I do think the pedals would be the first thing to upgrade and I personally wouldn't buy them myself. But for someone who isn't sure if they're willing to spend hundreds on a set of pedals, it is a very cheap way to tip your toe in the water and see if you want to move up from racing on a controller. Let's talk about driving performance because this is where the C5 really needs to walk the walk. 
And the C5 is advertised as a five Newton meter wheelbase. And that's lucky for me because I like my wheels at about five Newton meters anyway, even if they're capable of a lot more than that. So straight out of the box, the default settings have the C5 running at 50% torque which is about two and a half Newton meters. And uh, when I ran it at those default settings, it was way too weak. I did not like it at two and a half Newton meters. So knowing that I like my wheels at five Newton meters, I put it all the way up to 100%. And straight away, the feeling was really good. Um, the way that the steering loads up as you enter a corner, the bumps throughout the track, the just the general feedback uh, was all really positive and I was able to set competitive laps pretty much straight away, just after I set the dial up to 100%. But uh, it did have one quirk, which took me a while to figure out. But any time the car would start to slide, it would produce this really unpleasant grinding feeling. And um, it wasn't a sound, you didn't hear it, um, but you would feel it in the wheel and force feedback. Just this very, very unpleasant sensation anytime the rear would slide. And in the F3, which I'm driving now, sliding the rear just a little bit is a really important part of finding lap time. And I also love my dirt street stocks. And so those are sideways about three quarters of the time. And it became super distracting having that uh, grinding every time the rear was sliding. Um, turns out what I did was I turned the force feedback down to 80% and that actually got rid of the weird grinding sensation completely. And all of the force feedback that I get from the C5 at the 80% torque is perfect. I love the force feedback that the C5 is giving me. Um, and actually the amount of torque that's coming out of here um, feels absolutely perfect. It doesn't feel like it's four Newton meters, which would be on the lighter side of what I usually run. In fact, significantly lighter than what I run. Um, so with the C5 running at 80%, the feedback is, I would say, perfect. So very, very happy with the driving experience of the C5. And actually, I'm gonna stop the car now. Just gonna hold the brakes. And there's one other aspect of the steering feel that I wanted to talk about, and that's when the steering is not being loaded with the force feedback. And this test isn't really relevant because what matters is when you're racing. But when the steering wheel is not being loaded up and you steer it left and right, there's definitely a graininess that comes through. And you feel that a little bit in the steering wheel, but also that little bit of graininess, it passes through the aluminum profile cockpit and I feel it in the soles of my feet through the pedals, actually, which is a little bit surprising. And um, if we compare that to the Fanatec DD1, which I have, that has a very obvious notchy cogging feeling where it's like clunk, clunk, clunk. Um, and the Simagic Alpha Mini is just completely smooth. You can just spin it back and forth and it's like there's nothing there. But that grainy feeling definitely stood out to me. It's something I haven't felt with any other direct drive wheelbase before. And I don't think it really matters but when I have used other wheelbases which have a completely smooth feeling, it does contribute to my perception of the quality of the product, even though the driving experience is perfect. In terms of outright performance, I set up a test session in iRacing using the F3 at the Nürburgring WEC layout, which was the official combination a few weeks ago when I started the testing. And in this lap chart, the lap times are actually one minute plus the value on the left. It's just the way that I drew the graph. So you can see with the T300 RS, I did a one minute 49 flat, then with the G29, a minute 48.9. With the C5, one minute 48.6. And with the DD1, a 148.497. And I wanted to see that this was actually down to the hardware and not me just getting better at the car and track combination. So I went back in with the C5 and the G29, which were in the one minute 48.5s. And if you look at the optimal, they were at the 148.3. So I'd say that between the C5 and the Fanatec DD1 and indeed the Logitech G29, my best lap times were within margin of error with each other. Which reinforces one of the things that I've heard online, which is that direct drive wheels don't actually make you faster. They can definitely feel a lot more immersive and they can kick out a lot more torque. But in terms of setting a fast lap time, at least over a single lap, in my hands, I'm just as fast with a DD wheel as I am with the good old fashioned Logitech G29. 
Although the driving experience itself is quite positive, I do have some complaints about the usability of this rim. Aside from the plasticky feel of the buttons, the layout is not very ergonomic. The button placement is certainly led by the circular shape of the wheel rather than an ergonomic fit for where your hands naturally lie. And in terms of reaching out with my thumb, only these two buttons fall naturally where I expect them to be. All the other buttons on the face require some amount of searching with my thumb to find, or worse, bringing my eyes down from the screen to look at the wheel to find where the buttons are. Having three rotary encoders on the wheel is definitely a good thing, but I really miss having a funky switch. A funky switch is basically seven buttons in one, and I love using them for my black box controls because manipulating a black box takes exactly seven inputs, which means that on a wheel that does have a funky switch, just the one button can be your black box controller. On the C5, since it doesn't have a funky switch, my black box controls swallow up seven of the buttons, which isn't a huge deal because there are actually plenty of buttons on the wheel, but I really miss having a funky switch, and I think that might be one of the reasons to upgrade from the C5. Also, the labeling for the buttons feels very halfway done. These four buttons are labeled A, B, C, D, but none of the other buttons are labeled at all. And the only stickers you get in the pack are these, which go around the rotary encoders. And these aren't labeled, they're just two slightly different variations of white rings that go around the encoders. If labeled stickers were included, they'd be a lot more useful, but as is, they serve no purpose. In fact, I'd rather they include no stickers at all because this halfway done sticker set just draws attention to the fact that the button labeling is inadequate. I'm also not a fan of the LED implementation on the C5. When I received the wheel initially, there was no control over the LEDs whatsoever. The panel would display speed and the rev LEDs were a set color scheme and you couldn't tune either of those. A software update was released two weeks ago, which is a full year after the launch of the C5. And that does allow you to set the panel here to show speed or gear and also set the individual RGB colors of the rev strip. Unfortunately, there's still no ability to tune the behavior of the LED rev strip. Have a look at this clip and pay attention to the LEDs on the wheel versus what you hear for the engine sounds and also the gear indicator on the monitor. The LEDs sometimes flash way before red line. Sometimes you'll be banging into the red line and they just don't flash. And sometimes the status of the LEDs kind of gets frozen. The inconsistent nature of the LEDs is worse than having no LEDs at all, since it becomes distracting noise rather than useful information. So although I appreciate that a software update has allowed us the opportunity to adjust the color of the LEDs, my hope is that Camus introduces the ability to tune when they activate. And until that happens, I'm gonna leave the LEDs switched off. There's also a few small details of the C5 that I thought were useful to discuss. The included USB cables for the pedals and the wheelbase are really, really nice. They have a really nice feel to them and the connectors are Camus branded and they look and feel really nice to use. But the Allen key that came with the pedals was unusable. It had a little defect at the end which stopped it from being inserted into the bolts. And I think like the button stickers, it would have been better to not include a hex key rather than a defective hex key because it just draws attention to the fact that the key that's provided is low quality. Also, the paint finish on the mounting kit was quite rough and there was a film of excess paint that I had to crack off before I could insert a bolt into it. So it's a weird combination of really high quality inclusions like the USB cable and low quality details like the outer spec hex key. And these give me a confused overall impression of the brand overall. So then, is the C5 a worthwhile purchase and does it do a good job of being an entry level wheelbase? For me, the answer is yes and no. The C5 has very competent performance. I'm 100% satisfied with the force feedback and I've driven a lot of direct drive steering wheels and I am just as happy racing on the C5 as any other wheelbase you've seen on my channel. The strength and detail is right where I like it, remembering that I like to drive at 5 Nm even if my wheelbase is capable of a lot more. For the price, I think it delivers a great driving experience for not a lot of money. So if you want a very capable direct drive wheel on a budget, I think it's a good purchase. 
but I don't think it does a very good job at its second goal, which is to convince you that Camus is the way to go when you upgrade to higher end sim gear. Camus do offer stronger, fuller featured and more expensive hardware that I don't have any first hand experience with. But since I've only tested the C5 and experienced the issues that I did, like the fact that LED control only came a year after launch and is still broken, included stickers that are of no use and low quality details like the outer spec hex key and the imperfect paint finish. I'm curious if these same issues affect the more expensive Camus products and someone who's in this situation and wanting to upgrade, I think that looking at other brands is a real possibility when they have these experiences. I think Camus have a very good wheelbase in the C5. I just think that they're missing a little bit of attention to detail in the other factors that round out the user experience. And if they could just nail those small details, the C5 would do a better job at showing the world what Camus is capable of and why you should buy their more expensive products. I hope that I can test Camus's higher end gear and share with you guys my first hand feedback. We'll see what they have to say once they see this review. Time will tell. But I hope you guys enjoyed the review and got something useful out of it. As always, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.